Hello, everyone. Greetings. Uh... Atomy has all the objective conditions for anyone to succeed. But not everyone does. No success in this world is given for free. However, you don't need to have a high degree or high IQ. Nor do you need to know about a lot of things. Anyone can do it. But not everyone achieves success. If we look at the statistics, about 60% of the members succeed. Then why do the remaining 40% not succeed? It's simple. It's because they quit. They simply quit. That is why they could not succeed. But those who persevere can become an imperial master. All of you here will not give up, right? Those who quit cannot be successful. If you don't give up, you can be an imperial master. There is actually a man named Paul Meyer. He is the most mentioned person in our seminars and success academy. He was once a homeless person. But now he is a millionaire who owns about 50 companies. His name is Paul J. Meyer. His book was translated into Korean and published. The title of the book is Attitude is Everything. The book explains that one's attitude is the most important thing. It's actually a very thin book. The book introduces a story. And the story is about a prince in the Arabian Kingdom. This prince was supposed to succeed the king's throne, but he was a hunchback. So, the king was very worried. However, on the twelfth birthday of the prince, the king asked him, What is your wish? The prince responded unhesitatingly, Please make me a statue of myself. In front of the window, in my room. But let it be a statue that represents my appearance, where I am standing tall and confident. That was his request. The king was thus very surprised. He regretted for asking him what his wish was because he thought the prince was insecure for asking such a request. But the prince had already told his wish, so the king had to grant him his wish. He couldn't take his word back. Thus, the king set up a statue of the prince where he was standing tall and confident with no disabilities. After that, the prince went in front of the statue every day and practiced to stand up straight. He tried to fix his posture even in the midst of great pain. He did that for a year, then two, and so on. The servants no longer took notice of the prince's actions because it was now a daily routine for the prince. The prince did that for nine whole years. On his twenty-first birthday, he walked into the king's room, and he had a straight posture with no hunchback. Everyone was shocked. The prince's hunchback became straight, and he became a confident warrior of a prince. Paul Meyer mentions in his book, this is not a made-up story, but rather it is a true story. Paul Meyer is trying to say through the book that all humans are born with a handicap. Though Paul Meyer expresses in this story as a hunchback, 
he is trying to say that everyone has a handicap of their own. However, if one channels their passion and focuses their energy, everyone can overcome those handicaps. This means that our attitude shows our mindset of how we approach things. Attitude is a mindset one has when approaching a challenge. In conclusion, Paul Meyer is saying that if one perseveres and channels one's passion to one thing, one can be successful. The title of today's lecture is A Leader is a VIP. Next. Currently, the fourth industrial revolution is unfolding before our eyes. Decision-making based on computer models is exponentially improving. Regardless of such developments, a leader's role is ever more important. In the 1970s, the expression, the age of uncertainty, was coined. What about our age now? Uncertainty is not decreasing. But rather, we are entering an age of hyper-uncertainty. Everything is changing so quickly. During this time, a person who presents a direction is a leader. That is why the importance of a leader is becoming more and more important. A paradigm is a way of seeing the world. It is a perspective of seeing the world. Because the framework of how to see the world is constantly changing, a leader must go forward and lead one's partners to the direction where one thinks the world will change into. So, a leader is a VIP. This is not from a textbook of some sort. After having lectured for about 10 years, I was able to come up with the following. What is the first? Very important person. Very important person. In other words, a nobleman. Second, vision, insight, and philosophy. A leader must present a vision and have insight. And third, philosophy. A leader must have a philosophy to lead one's partners. Third is virtue, integrity, and people. A leader must be virtuous and he must have integrity. And people signifies the public good. A leader should not be someone who only cares about his own interest. Such a person cannot be a leader. Fourth is valor, industry, and passion. So, valor mentioned here is not just any kind of valor. It is a valor that shows during a battle. That is because our society is currently like a battlefield for those who are in the atomy business. Industry means to be diligent and one also needs to be passionate. Let's look at these one by one. First is being a very important person. A leader is a nobleman. What then does that make all of you here? Are you a leader or a follower? You are all leaders. Are you all officers or enlisted soldiers? You are all officers. There are about 5 million Atomy members today. But there are only about 5,000 of you here, right? That makes you all leaders. Also, because we have a compensation ceiling that makes all of you number one, you have to lead your partners. You cannot be led by others. Do you know what you call a person who gets dragged on? A slave. A person who drags the other person is a pro. That makes all of you here pros. You all need to have a mindset of a pro. Rather than bad mouth other people or ask things from other people. You shouldn't talk behind the back of your sponsors. Such a person is a slave, not a pro. A pro does not reveal other people's mistakes nor does he talk bad about other people. A pro leads others regardless of how they are treated. Depending on the leader and organization's performance varies greatly. I'm sure Koreans all know about these two people, General Lee Soon Shin and General Won Gyun. At the time, Cho Sun's naval forces were probably the best in the world. General Lee won all of his 23 battles. In the world of naval battles, there was and is no match. Won Gyun, on the other hand, led such a mighty force into their destruction within a single day. Does that mean the officers and soldiers were different? No, they were all the same. The generals had the same personnel and material resources. They had the same turtle ship and panok ship. All the personnel and material resources were the same, but one person 
won all of his battles. Meanwhile, the other lost the only battle that they fought, which led to the total destruction of the naval forces. They were destroyed. The leader makes this much of a difference. Now, all of you are leaders. So, you should not blame the company, your environment, your sponsors, and your partners. You just have to look at your own leadership. Next is a famous saying of Napoleon's. He said, if you had a hundred lions as your army, but you are a dog, then that lion army will die fighting like a dog. However, if an army has a hundred dogs, but if you are a lion, that army will fight like lions. Alexander the Great also said these same words. He actually said, I am more afraid of an army of sheep led by a lion than an army of lion led by a sheep leader. An army of sheep led by a lion. Your partners might be a sheep, but if you just sit and complain about them, that means you are a sheep as well. It means you are also a dog. It doesn't matter if your partners or soldiers are a sheep or dogs. If you are a lion, then the whole army will be a lion army. You should never blame other people. Next. A vision is an ideal state of where we want to go or what we want to achieve. If one wants to lead an organization, a leader must be certain of the group's vision. Only then can the organization run towards that vision. The person that presents this vision is the leader. What that means is that a leader leads the development of an organization. A leader should not focus on small things. But rather a leader must present a vision. That is long-term and from a grand outlook. And then you must go toward that vision. If you don't have a vision, you cannot go forward. A leader must do this. The most important thing for a leader is to present a vision and communicate. When the world's first class company, GE, was on the brink of collapsing, when it hit an overwhelming obstacle. Jack Welch became the company's CEO. He was the man that made GE into a first-class company again. What Jack Welch emphasized most during this time was education. Education. He pondered how he would educate his employees, so he persistently educated them. Thus, a leader must be able to present a vision, but should one only do that? One must also continuously communicate with one's subordinates, open the door to one's office all the time, and also open one's heart to others. Jack kept talking to his subordinates and peers with an open mind. And that was how he was able to make GE once again into a first-class company. Next is insight. Insight is only possible when one has a macro perspective and endless practice. One must be able to see far into the future. One should not look at the trivial things in life and say, I hate my sponsor. It is about looking far into the future and leading others there. Having insight is having sound judgment. What will the future be like? The fourth industrial revolution's essence is answering this question. This is what sound judgment is. Here is a man beloved by Americans the most. He did not even graduate from elementary school, but he is the only man in the U.S. history where his portrait is hung in the White House without having become the president. This is unprecedented. What reigns in one's twenties? The will. People in their twenties tend to give up quickly. They easily quit their jobs. 
What about in one's thirties? It is wisdom. And in one's forties? It is sound judgment. If one does not judge well where one is going, that person will lead his subordinates and partners into an abyss. Next. Philosophy. Having a philosophy helps the leaders and partners run together towards a goal. A leader must have a philosophy, but this is not easy as it sounds. One must share their philosophy. Then what kind of philosophy must one have? It is the philosophy that Atomy presents. They are the creeds of the company, being, speed, and balance. You know all of this, right? Then there is our motto and our management objectives, the success of our members being a distribution hub and a premier company. What must we do in order to achieve this? If you share your philosophy, you will not fail. You will not act on your own. You just admitted that the goal is for the customer's success. From a sponsor's and leader's standpoint, who are the customers? All of your partners are also your customers. Also, all of you always say cherish the spirit, but if you only fill your own pockets by manipulating your partners, those are acts violating the company motto. If you share such philosophy, you can be successful. Next. Valor is a prerequisite for a leader. If a leader is a coward, the partners will also be cowards. Leaders must have a valor as a lion. Next. This is Rollo May, an existential philosopher. From a psychoanalytic standpoint, Rollo considers valor to be the most important factor. Valor is a prerequisite for survivability and development. So, a person with no valor cannot survive nor can he improve. Next is industry. If you are lazy, you cannot achieve anything. A leader especially must be industrious. Industry, diligence are also capabilities. It is a capability. If you work for an hour and a half instead of an hour, your productivity goes up. A leader must be industrious. Passion The engine for an organization's development is passion. In the past, in the 20th century, even until the 1990s, people thought that a person's success was determined by one's IQ. But, after much research by researchers, they found out that IQ had no correlation to a person's achievement. It had no correlation. According to researchers, the effects of IQ in elementary school were 50%. If you had good grades in elementary school, that means student is very smart. In middle school, 30%. And in high school, IQ factored into only 20% of a student's grades. And what about in college? Only 10%. Once in society, IQ has barely any effects at all. Thus, after much research, researchers concluded that the factors that determined societal success the most was passion and perseverance. You just have to throw everything you got on life and never give up. Next. Passion is the foundation of development. This is what Henry Ford, the king of automobiles, said. Passion serves as a foundation for all kinds of development. If you have passion, you can achieve great things. If you have no passion, what remains? Only excuses. I couldn't do it because of this. Because of the sponsors. Because of my partners. Those things might be minor reasons, but you can overcome such obstacles with passion and perseverance. Next, virtue, integrity, and people. To have virtue is explained well in the Analects of Confucius. A virtuous person is never lonely but will always have a neighbor. The neighbor mentioned here is talking about your international partners. Those who have no virtue simply leave. In Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching, it says virtue is not about boasting. Those who are truly virtuous do not say that they are virtuous. Those who have true virtue do not boast their virtue. But those who have no virtue will boast that it was their virtue that brought success. These people, in fact, have no virtue. If you read books about trust, it expressed that you do not trust those who require of your trust. You know people who say, just trust me, I am trustworthy. Those are people that should not be trusted. Those who are trusted have no need to require of others' trust. 
The best reputation is the one with virtue. Such is true in our society and the U.S. as well. A person may be smart and a person may be diligent. And a person's reputation may depend on all of those things. However, no matter how smart a person is, if that person does not have virtue, he is nothing. Next. Integrity signifies both honesty and diligence. Americans deem integrity to be the most important trait. You all know Warren Buffett, right? You know what he said? When I hire an employee, I only look at his integrity. He said that he looks at their diligence. Then, the next thing he looked at was ability. That is because those who are competent but not diligent would make a company fail. They lie and make the company collapse. Diligence is something that a leader must have. Next, a leader must cherish other people, which is working for the public's interest. This is in line with Adamy's spirit. This is what cherishing other people means. If you have a mindset to work for your partner's success or for your customer's success, then you will surely be successful. You can put these nine traits into three categories. First, in order to become a very important person, what do you need? You need to have good character first. Then, to have the right attitude, you need passion, industry, and valor. After that, you need capability. To be a leader, you need to present a vision and have insight. And if you acquire these traits, you can surely be successful. The conclusion is noblesse oblige. I'm sure you all know this. It is a story of Rome. Rome was a small city-state located in the Midwest of Italy. How they built the greatest empire in the world was due to noblesse oblige. During battle, the noble class would first jump into the battle, and war cost and taxes were only collected amongst the nobility. This was what made Rome into a great empire, but as Rome expanded and got rich, they ran into a moral dilemma. The noble class stopped jumping into war, and they hired mercenaries instead. They stopped paying taxes and started to live a lavish lifestyle. That was what brought them to their ruin. So, what I'm trying to say is, all the imperial crown and royal masters here, as you continue to climb the ranks, you need to fulfill your duties as a leader. Then, Atomy will never collapse. You will be able to make all of your partners into imperial masters. I hope all of you here will one day become imperial masters. Thank you very much.